For the fans filing into their national baseball stadium here in Panama City, we are just about set to go for game number four of the 2022 World Baseball Classic Qualifier. Pool B play continues from here in Panama as we've already got one team on to a play-in game on Tuesday. Brazil winners earlier today over Nicaragua and tonight a matchup that should be a very good one as yesterday's winners in the night game, Argentina, get set to take on the host nation, Panama. Back inside Estadio Rod Crew, just about an hour and 15 minutes after the close of our last game. My name is Tyler Mon, alongside the former big leaguer and Team Australia pitcher Ryan Roland-Smith. An impressive win for Brazil. Yeah. Three hours of a rain delay, about 20 minutes of a light delay. They pushed through to get the victory, and now tonight Panama and Argentina trying to meet them in Tuesday's play-in game. Yeah, you mentioned the rain delay, but we are already at that point, Tyler, in these qualifications where teams are just a win away from qualifying to the big dance at the World Baseball Classic in March. We're going to see Panama in front of the home crowd. They're still piling in here. It's going to be an absolute blast. Here is how the bracket looks after Brazil's win earlier today. The winner of this game will meet them coming up on Tuesday in a play-in game to reach the 2023 World Baseball Classic. The loser of this game will square off with New Zealand tomorrow in the night game from here at Estadio Rod Carew. That's the loser's bracket. You got to win to stay alive on that side. But for Brazil and the winner of this this one, you've got an opportunity on Tuesday to play for one of those first two tickets to the World Baseball Classic from here in Panama City. It's hard to believe that we're already halfway there right. uh, toward determining those two Game 8 participants. Yeah, for Panama being the highest seed, they get that chance to go straight to that game. And they're literally two victories away from qualification. But you look at this, this is how it works. I love this format. They're fo formatted um, into two pools, six teams for a pool. We've already been in Germany, Czech Republic, Great Britain. They're off to the World Baseball Classic. Each pool plays in a modified double elimination tournament. We already have teams on the brink of that. And all these qualifi qualifiers go into the main event, and that is in March. Here are the two managers for this evening's matchup. On the right side of your screen is Luis Ortiz, the manager of this Panama national team, wearing the number 21. He is from Cologne, and a guy who is currently coaching in the Kansas City Royals organization. And on the other side for Argentina, Rolando Arnedo, who found himself and his team in a tough battle last night with Pakistan, a game that ended as a 7-4 Argentinian victory. But Pakistan brought the tying run to the plate in the ninth. Yeah, they did. And for Argentina, man, this is a different kettle of fish. That is for sure up against this Panama Panamanian team. A lot of ex-big leaguers, a lot of prospects. They have been on this stage plenty of times. It is going to be a good one tonight. Starting lineup looks like this for Argentina, as announced by Rolando Arnedo, the manager of this Argentinian national team, as well as the Arizona Complex League Diamondbacks in the Arizona D-Bag system. Sebastian Garcia is the center fielder leading things off. Then it's Agustin Tessera, the shortstop, and Ezekiel Talevi, who was a force yesterday. Two for three, triple, two runs batted in, two walks, a stolen base for him. Eduardo Zabrigan is the designated hitter. Then it's Asinto Ciprio to the first baseman and Andres Kim at at third base. William Pedroso is the right fielder. Jose Jerez gets his first start behind the plate. And Lucas Stellman gets his first start in left field. And we are set to see a whole lot of people filing into this ballpark tonight. The defensive alignment for Panama. Alan Cordoba is in left field. Jose Ramos is in center. And Rodrigo Orozco is in right. Jose Caballero at third base. Ruben Zahada at short. Jonathan Arauz is at second. Leonard Jones at first. Carlos Sanchez behind the plate. And the right-handed starting pitcher tonight is Humberto Mejia, who gets the nod for the host nation. Yeah, this guy, I mean, you're talking about this Panamanian team. A lot of ex-big leaguers. Humberto Mejia was literally in the big leagues a year ago with the D-backs. You know, he's struggling a little bit, 7-2-5 ERA. But he's had a couple of years now in the big leagues. He pitched in Mexico more recently. As you can see, Panama getting ready to take the field. We are just moments away. And this crowd waiting a long time to get to this point to watch their country do their thing. Let's take a look at some of the rules and regulations as they pertain to this World Baseball Classic. We do have video review, each team with a challenge. Managers can exercise that challenge from the first through the seventh innings. After the seventh, they can ask for a review. Prior to the seventh, if you're successful with the challenge, you keep it. If you're not, you lose it no more. Designated hitters are in play for this qualifying round, but two limits uh, or two rules that we have seen in Major League Baseball implemented in recent years, not adopted here, the three batter minimum and the mound visit limitation. Yeah, and we saw that today in the afternoon game with Nicaragua making a ton of pitching changes. You talk about some of the, the speed-up rules and MLB is trying to implement. 
not the case here. You, you, you couldn't do that with some of the, the limitations on the pitching. Uh, and we're not going to see that either in, in March uh, 2022, excuse me, 2023, when we get to the World Baseball Classic, they keep these rules as is. There are a ton of people filing into this ballpark. For the first three games of this 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier, we have not gotten a chance to see this home crowd because Panama waited until uh, the night game on night number two as the top seeded team coming into this WBC qualifier. So they finally get to play in front of home fans. And not only that, but they get to do it in this ballpark, which is the National Baseball Stadium here in Panama and is a place that has undergone a ton of renovation, a ton of work, looks absolutely beautiful. And we are expecting upwards of 10,000 in the ballpark tonight as Umberto Mejia gets set to roll for Panama. And you think about it too, I mean, yeah, for Umberto Mejia, obviously some big league time the last couple of years and pitching all over the world, but I remember this in 2016 getting a chance to play in my backyard for my country, games that really count. And so this is not an exhibition, this is not you know, something where you come back and, and you know, play against an Argentina just for, uh, as a friendly, no, 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 this is, there's a lot, on the a lot on the line, a lot at stake here for a team like Panama. Sebastian Garcia getting set to step into the batter's box to square off with Humberto Mejia. As Ryan noted, this is a guy who was in the big leagues the last two seasons. He made his major league debut with the Miami Marlins in 2020. Pitched with the Arizona Diamondbacks in five games in 2021. This year, in the D-back system for nine relief appearances with AAA Reno, let go by Arizona. He surfaced in the Mexican League. Three different stops there with the Guerreros of Oaxaca, the Mariachis of Guadalajara, and the Toros of Tijuana. And combined, he made 11 appearances, all of them starts in the Mexican League this year. 5.61 ERA and a guy who is still in a stage in his career in which he's pitching for a contract, pitching for some work going forward. He's just 25 years old. Right. And Mejia getting ready to roll. Yeah, getting that exposure. This is that big stage. Obviously, March is an even bigger stage. You get Panama in one of these pools. Not No easy pools, but you're playing against the world's best. You throw a couple good innings, anything can happen. But four seam, curveball, slider, and changeup for Mejia. So into the batter's box steps Sebastian Garcia as this big crowd here at Estadio Rod Carew, a Panamanian legend, ready to go. And the first pitch fouled away. 8.07 in the evening, we are underway. And Sebastian Garcia faces no one count. Sebastian yesterday was one for five with a double and a run scored. It's a big day for Rod Carew. We'll talk about that as the evening rolls along. Quickly no balls and two strikes on Garcia. And from here, getting two strikes quickly against these lefties. You'll see more of that changeup. It is a plus pitch to the righties. You'll see more of the slider. Two strikes. That's his put away pitch. 0 oh, 2 lofted the other direction and a long run over there for Alan Cordoba, but no play. Sticking with that fastball. Early on, you see how crucial it's been, Tyler, these last couple days for these starters to get established throw strikes, getting good counts. Quickly 0-2. Two-strike pitch coming. Bouncing ball towards second. Jonathan Arouse, one up, one down. And that's the other thing with Humberto Mejia. Big ground ball right. See that ball getting on the ground. All of a sudden, you figure out he's got that sinker working. You'll see more of those pitches, especially the lefties as well. I'm going to try right. The ball underneath the barrel. So that brings up Augustine to Sarah to the plate. To Sarah, two for five yesterday with a run scored. And first pitch swinging. Skies one out into shallow right. Arouse the second baseman, two down. Arouse, the former big leaguer himself. Nine games at the major league level this year with the Baltimore Orioles, six more with the Boston Red Sox. He's a very talented Panama team. And the right-hander, Humberto Mejia, already quickly through two outs. And that brings in Ezekiel Talevi, who, like I said, an absolute force yesterday. Two for three, two walks, a triple, two runs batted in, a stolen base. Kicking the pitch on the way to him. Ball one.
And a bouncing ball right back to Mejia. Three up and three down. And this charged up Panama crowd is set to welcome their heroes in the bottom of the first. A terrific opening half inning for Humberto Mejia. We're headed to the bottom of one. Argentina scoreless and Panama coming up. We got a rocking atmosphere in the house at Estadio Rod Carew tonight. There is the musical artist Boza who threw out first pitch this evening. We also had uh, DJ DeMello flow. What, spinning what some favorite? hits. Uh, a few boots down to our left. I, I'm hoping they bring the mood lighting in from his booth. He's still like down it. there. He's spinning, uh, spinning the tracks all night. Oh, uh, come on, Tyler. Spinning the they, tracks? I'm hoping they bring the lighting in here. <laughs> I feel like I might be able to fill yeah. that role. I'm slide in that booth. <laughs> Boza with a strike to get this thing rolling. And tonight's starting pitcher, Guido Moniz, will try to do the same against this lineup for Panama. Alan Cordoba will lead things off. Then it's Ruben Tejada and Jonathan Arauz. Jones, Ramos, Caballero, the middle three. Orozco, Sanchez, and Munoz rounding things out. And they're up against Guido. Muniz is 43 years old. He's been part of this Argentina national team in some capacity. Get this, Tyler, for the last 24 years. Pretty incredible. Unbelievable. And a little tapped, or, tapped roller out in front of the plate, and an easy play there for Jose Jerez, the starting catcher, getting his first nod of the WBC qualifier. And one up, one down as Alan Cordoba is retired. Yeah, for, yeah, for Guido Muniz. Pitching a ton of these South American championships. Yeah, there he is. Take a look at him, the lefty. Like I said, 43 years old. Still bringing it. Trying to get to that World Baseball Classic one last time. Moniz out of Buenos Aires. Pitching for Ferro Carril West in the Argentinian League. One pitch, one out against Alan Cordoba. You can see Panama coming up swinging. And here is Ruben Tejada, another former big leaguer in the major leagues as recently as 2019 with the New York Mets. He spent 2010 through 2015 with the Mets. Those were really good years, and he drives this one in the air to center field. Garcia started in on it. Now he backpedals to make the catch. Two gone. I see a good swing. See what the aggressive. And just missed that pitch, just getting a little bit underneath it. We talked about this too. Coming in game one on the second day, Argentina's already got a game under their belt against Pakistan. And went through the ebbs and flows of trying to get comfortable where they're at. Panama. At the kind of lineup, though, you've had that feeling they all know each other. 
So I'm going to take long for them to get settled in. So two gone. Here is Jonathan Arouse and the third former big leaguer to lead off this lineup for Panama is plunked. And see Monet's trying to get that break and ball get away from the first pitch swinging. Frustrated. Another one up on the big board. That's number go. 10. We're at 10. 10 players hit by pitches through three games plus not even one full inning. We thought the 23 that we had over nine games in Germany was a lot. We were on track to pretty much break that by tomorrow. <laughs> so that brings in Leonard Jones, LJ Jones, as he is up on the board here in Panama. He takes the first pitch for a strike. LJ, a former prospect in the, or a current prospect, I should say, in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Fouls this one first base side, playable, ton of foul ground here, and Jose Jerez is able to get over there to make the grab. So a couple of really quick innings by these starting pitchers, and we move to the top half of the second, all scoreless in Panama City. Argentina went three up, three down in the top of the first inning, and we head to the second. It'll be the middle third of the order, led by the designated hitter, Eduardo Zerbergen, to get things started here in the second. Back at the Stadio, Rod Carew. Getting ready to roll with Zerbergen stepping in. Our four-person umpiring crew this evening is Mark Stewart from the United States at third base. Rantisek Prabil from the Czech Republic at second. Lisa Turbett from Canada at first. And Michael Uyoya from Spain. He is behind the plate. Michael was standing out to the side of the batter's box a moment ago and looking out at something in the outfield. Didn't know if there was a piece of debris on the field or something like that, but whatever he saw satisfied his curiosity. His this pitch fouled back in away. We talked about how quick that first inning was. You can see Panama just so fired up. Like I said, this is probably one of those first times for some of these guys have been playing in the US for so long to come back in front of their home crowd, Panama. All of a sudden, they're just pressing, trying to get that swing off, be a hero from the first inning onwards. Get the adrenaline cranking. Serbergen yesterday, one for three, couple of walks and a run batted in. DH out of the cleanup spot. As you look inside that first base dugout to the world's number. 13 ranked national team. 
Panama on home soil with a huge opportunity to qualify for the World Baseball Classic and starting things off right on the pitcher's mound. First strikeout for Humberto Mejia. Yeah, we talked about some of the put away pitches, the lefties, righties. Not needed so far, straight gas from Mejia feeling good with that fastball in any count, especially with two strikes. There is Luis Ortiz, the native of Cologne. It's amazing too, when Panama's hitting, drums are going, horns are going, crowds are getting crazy. Argentina, it's nice and quiet for him. Fly ball easily handled out in right by Rodrigo Orozco. Two gone. Five up and five down against Humberto Mejia. Yeah, Mejia getting in that good rhythm. You're talking about throwing a ton of fastballs already. One thing that does as well, when you're going to turn the lineup over, you get to face him a second, third time, you haven't shown that change up or that, that good slider of his with two strikes. So kind of keep that in that back pocket just a little bit, especially when you can handle these hitters. This guy's a big leaguer. He's been around for a while. When you know that you're getting past that barrel, you'll stay with that fastball all day. First pitch there for a strike to Andres Kim. Kim yesterday, two for three with a walk and a run scored. A lot of strikes right out of the gate by this right-handed starter, Humberto Mejia. Kicks and comes home on 0-1 and a foul ball back and out of play and quickly 0-2. Mejia trying to set down the side in order in his first two innings. Kicking the 0-2 pitch. Rounded out towards second, and he should do it. An easy play over there for Jonathan Arauz. And that sends us to the bottom of the second. Three up, three down goes Argentina again. Headed to the bottom of two scoreless. Some of the all-time greats in the game of baseball from this host nation of Panama. Carlos Lee, El Caballo, Chooch, Carlos Ruiz. Of course, the greatest closer of all time, Mariano Rivera. And the man for whom this stadium is named. And we owe him a special shout out because today is Rod Carew's 70th, 77th birthday. Very happy birthday to Rod Carew. Won the American League Most Valuable Player Award in 1977. He now turns 77 years old, and Jose Ramos will step into the batter's box. We also cannot neglect to mention a guy who broke a lot of barriers for Panamanian ballplayers, Hector Lopez, who is a star and maybe not the most household name, but a guy who played some incredible baseball 
in the 1960s for the New York Yankees and spent some time in Major League Baseball with the Kansas City A's as well. He passed away on Thursday at his home in Hudson, Florida. He was 93 years old. Hector Lopez, not just a ball player, he was also the first black manager at the AAA level in minor league baseball in the United States. And Ryan, you had an interaction earlier today that really tells yeah. the impact of Hector Lopez's career. Yeah, it really does. And you know, I got a chance to talk to some of the local broadcasters here in Panama and you know, just talking about you know, the, the culture here, the baseball culture and how much they follow the U.S. And, He's telling me all about how, you know, hey, look, the, co the country of Panama loves the Yankees. And straight away, I'm thinking to myself, okay, because of Mariano, of course. Of course. He said, no, he said, no, Hector Lopez won the, won the uh, World Series in the 60s with the Yankees. And ever since then, this entire country has gotten behind the New York Yankees. And, of course, could you imagine Mariano Rivera ascending to greatness years later? Rope foul down the left field line off the bat of the leadoff man here in the bottom of the second, Jose Ramos. Hector Lopez has two nicknames listed for him on baseball reference. They are the Panama Clipper, fantastic one, especially on the heels of the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. But also, what a pair of hands, presumably for his fielding skills. It's, yeah, it's kind of a complicated nickname. What like. a pair of hands. Pretty cool, though. The Cologne native as a hit by pitch here will put Jose Ramos aboard as a leadoff base runner here in the second. And for Hector Lopez, you know, a guy who really broke a lot of barriers. Yeah, it really did. See another hit by pitch. We've been talking about this. One big reason why you're seeing these hit by pitches because we've talked about it from inning number one to inning number nine. These pitchers are trying to make that big pitch, especially with two strikes. We talked about this in Germany. You get to two strikes against some of these tough hitters. Obviously, Panama is a powerhouse lineup. A lot of big leagues in there. And you're trying to do that little extra, and then all of a sudden you come in, especially when you're trying to pitch inside, get out of the middle of the plate, and you end up hitting someone. And I think that's another important thing to note as well is we've heard so much over the last, you know, maybe two decades of baseball that ah, nobody pitches inside anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that's coming back into vogue. We've seen, you know, everything in baseball, everything in sports is cyclical. And guys work away from hitters in certain spots. Now we've seen, you know, something that is so prevalent is pitching up, trying to go elevated with fastballs, raise, change eye level, all that type of stuff. When guys do try to work inside, you can be aggressive as the runner is off here, thrown out a second base by Garrett, escapes into center, and the stolen base forces an error, and the runner at third, now Ramos, representing the game's potential first run. Man, tough break, too, because Garrett, you see, this is a good, nice little pop. Right here, good release. Man, just half volleyed. The second baseman, Televi, right there, just couldn't pick it, but he was, that's an out right there, but couldn't keep it in front of him. Yeah, you're right. Ramos making things happen with his legs. Yeah, talking about pitching inside, too, it's such a weapon. You know, George Kirby, I got a chance to watch him, good young pitcher with the Seattle Mariners. One thing he talks about, once he learned to pitch inside, and this is one of the newer generations, pitches up in the zone, but then pitching in, once he could command that ball in, it just changed his career. It's a big part of it, especially when guys are crowding the plate. See right here, Caballero absolutely on the dish right now with that arm guard. There's a swing and a fly ball in the air to center field. Garcia coming in, makes the catch, tagging a third is Ramos, and he will score the night's first run. And these Panama fans charged up. It's a 1 0 lead in the second. And getting it done early. You can hear the crowd right now banging on those drums. There's some energy in this place. You can see their boys getting on the board. But if you're on the other side of this Argentina, you just cannot afford that margin. He's raised the thing. We talked about letting the base running get to third base. Ultimately scoring. You have to play defense. You have to be throwing strikes. As you can tell, Pretty raucous cheering section down below us. There is a band comprised of, I would say, eight or nine guys just down below our broadcast booth and toward the first base side. Drums, marimbas, the horns. Look at these guys in the first base dugout. Excited to get that early lead here in the second. You see more coming out of the dugout. You see more of that in the U.S. too. Yeah, you talk about... We, we saw, you know, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Venezuela coming out of the dugout. 
uh, in the first World Baseball Classic in 2006, and you see more of that in the U.S. now. I mean, they have so much fun playing down here. I played winter ball a bunch in Venezuela, the Dominican Republic. Man, it is an absolute blast. You got the crowd banging on drums, horns, energy through the roof, and then it just trickles into the dugout. You know, you really could make the argument, somebody could write a thesis on the theory that the World Baseball Classic opened the door to the let the kids play movement. You know, sure. making the the bat flips and the, the shows of emotion, the excitement coming out of the dugout, especially, you know, the last few years, what we saw in Miami a few years ago with the fans, the drums, the horns, the chants, all that. We see that in Asia. We see it in Latin America. But what we have seen over the last few years in Major League Baseball with players really trying to let that exuberance show, I right. think there's a direct correlation between 2006, the start of the WBC, and how that movement has grown over the last decade and a half since. That's a great point. And you even go back to as early as 06, even 2009 too. There's always this you know, sort of stigma about showing too much emotion. You know, good, good and bad. I mean, I remember being a young player, hey, you know, control your emotions, don't even give the fist pump or any of that. And some of my biggest mentors in the game were like, no, no, no. Show that emotion. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Have Let it fun. fly. Absolutely. And you see that, you know, with some of these Caribbean countries, that's so much fun. It's a blast. And that's what we talk about, too. Come March, I mean, you're talking about some of these powerhouse teams in the World Baseball Classic, the different cultures from all over the world, the way they play, the way they interact. And they get to do it all in the same dugout as their countrymen. I still remember, I can't remember if it was 2006 or 2009, but the first just stunningly beautiful bat flip I ever saw. David Ortiz hit a home run in a WBC game. I want to say it was 06. And, you know, that pounded the Dominican logo on his chest, yeah. threw the bat across the field. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. But even that, I mean, you think about a regular season game. Yeah. Everyone, that would be frowned upon. That would not have gone over well. No. Especially back then. Absolutely. Two balls, two strikes, two gone. Two, two. Right side and on through for a base hit. Carlos Sanchez comes through with a two out single. And that'll send it to Edgar Munoz out of the ninth spot. You can see these bats start to wake up. Just going with that pitch, a little off speed, that change up down the way. Not trying to get crazy with it. Just peppering that ball into right field. So two gone, and Munoz to the plate. Edgar plays in the Panamanian League back home. He is out of Cologne as well, like his manager, Luis Ortiz. Like Hector Lopez. nation produces a whole heck of a lot of talent for not being the biggest country the biggest baseball country here in Latin America a lot of talent and a lot of passion that's competitive this part of the world too I mean you think about it you know, your neighbors with Venezuela the Dominican Republic Puerto Rico you gotta step it up 3-0 on Munoz. Let's say you're going to jump down there and get that band. I'm what thinking it, about it. What instrument are you playing? Oh, drums. Yeah, absolutely. The drums, have, they Actually, have to have the most fun. The guys the drums oh, down do there. Do we have trumpets? Do we have trumpets? Where are the trumpets? Yeah, at? I believe there is a trumpet. Yeah. There is a trumpet. Do some belly warm-ups and start blowing on that trumpet. You should have seen me. <laughs> Sixth grade. Crushing it. That and a recorder. A band legend. Did I have a recorder? <laughs> <laughs> Three one swing and a miss. Count is full. Good pitch right there. Three one. You see how aggressive Panama has been. Get that change up in the hitter's count. I see the trumpet. There we go. DJ this. It does have far cooler lighting than oh, any yeah. other room in this building right now. Dimelo Flow, merely 
three doors away from us here as he plays the music at the ballpark tonight. Check on the runner over at first base, and Carlos Sanchez is back in there. This is a really good crowd tonight here in this ballpark. Beautiful Saturday evening at Estadio Rod Carew. And like I said, for many of these people, for most of these people, probably the first time they have seen this ballpark since the renovations here. Three, two inside for ball four, and it's first and second now with two gone. You can see that command start to deteriorate from Moniz. Try to make that perfect pitch, doesn't want to make a mistake. We saw that in the game today, man, when we saw Brazil throwing strikes in complete command of the game. Yeah, visit right here from the pitching coach. Nothing doing down in that bullpen just yet. Quick visit to the pitcher's mound from Marcelo Alfonsine, who is a coach in the Houston Astros organization in the United States. Actually, technically not in the United States. He works for the Dominican Summer League affiliate. Own remaining rookie level league in the minor leagues outside of the U.S. It used to be a Venezuelan summer league as well, but that was shut down several years ago. So two gone. We'll go back to the top of the order and Alan Cordova. Pitch inside. It's one and zero. Oh. You can see too. He's missing glove side a ton. He's just not making that adjustment. You see, body weight pulling him towards that right-handed hitter. strike. Alan Cordoba is an interesting story, man. He was a standout in the 2016 U23 Baseball World Cup for this Panama team. And the San Diego Padres liked him so much that they took him in the Rule 5 draft as he drives this one foul down the left field line. Grabbed him in 2016 and they, if I remember correctly, yeah, 2017 had to keep him on the big league roster the entire year, and he had never played above short season ball at that wow. point. You know a little something about being a, a Rule 5 guy. Mm -hmm. That is not an easy transition in your career, yeah. and especially if you're that young and all of a sudden the team says, hey, we like you so much, we're going to take you, but you got to jump up four levels into the minors. Now the bases are loaded on another hit by pitch. Again, trying to pitch inside, and Cordoba takes that one, so... He'll head to first. Sanchez to third, Munoz to second. And usually when you miss inside, you miss out over the plate. Let's see, Guido Muniz, in a situation where he just does not want to miss, make that mistake. Let's see another hit by pitch. Right hander working in the Argentina bullpen down the left field line. Base is loaded now with Cordoba at first. And it brings in a former big leaguer in Ruben Tejada. Tejada hit the ball well in the first inning, flew out to Sebastian Garcia in center. Strike away, only one run crossing the plate. Big pitch right here. When he's trying to wriggle out of this bottom of the second with just that one across on Jose Caballero, sacrifice fly. 0 2 pitch on the way to Tejada. Foul. Another chance here. Sometimes on these broadcasts, it is 
so difficult when an atmosphere is this good to not just take the headset off and let the band and these fans <laughs> tell you the story because it is so cool being in this atmosphere, being in this ballpark. One and two. Now you can see getting two strikes with ease, just not able to put away, had that finishing blow right here. Execute that pitch. Pitching away from contact. Tell you right now, you've been a part of a national team for 24 years. You probably feel like you've done some good things when you would challenge these hitters. Doesn't matter what level they're at. That's what you need to do right here. Get back in the strike zone. Guido Moni is born March 10th, 1979. Veteran lefty from the stretch. Home with another two strike off. And that one driven in the air toward right. And Pedruzzo has got it in his sights. And that will wrap things up here in the second. But Panama on the board here in the bottom of the second on the sacrifice fly. And this crowd loves it. one nothing headed to the top of the third. Big opportunity for Panama on the bottom of the second. Base is loaded. And Guido Moniz able to get out of the jam. A fly out from Ruben Tejada to right field. A little bit of frustration for the veteran. Shortstop on this Panama squad. But he does hand a 1-0 lead to his starter, Humberto Mejia, who heads to the mound for the third. He's retired the first six men he has faced. And Julian Pedroso, who made the catch for that final out, will lead things off. Here in the third. Yeah, Manisa able to wiggle out of that. We talked about getting back in the strike zone, pitching the contact, and a lazy fly ball, ball into right field. Talked a lot over the last couple of weeks about what velocity does, especially against non traditional baseball countries when guys have not seen it quite as much. And you can see William Pedroso is choked way up on that bat. Right. And he's been blown away by the first couple of pitches here from Roberto Mejia. Yeah, and the minute they start cheating a little bit, trying to speed up that bat, guess what? You get that changeup, you get that slider, breaking ball. That pitch that Mejia can get over for a strike. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. And the second strikeout of the evening for Roberto Mejia is out number one in the third. And we talked about his time in the big leagues the last couple of years and then pitching in Mexico. Look at this fastball elevated. Okay, we talked about this in the afternoon game, how big a weapon that is. When you see guys who pitch in the big leagues the last couple of, couple of years, Mejia, that's something we see a lot more of. Guys using that spin rate, getting above the barrel. That's a Harris in the air, out into no man's land and left. That is a long, long run. And Alan Cordova is able to chase it down.
Yeah, Mejia is making quick work of these Argentinian hitters. Yeah, that is just 19 pitches for Humberto Mejia. He'll face Lucas Stallman, the Boston College Eagle. With two gone and the base is empty. We talked with a couple of members of Lucas's family last night. They said he will return to Boston College for another year this year. He was granted, like all athletes in college sports in the United States, an extra year of eligibility for losing the 2020 season due to the onset of the pandemic. So he is planning on playing another season at BC. Man, did that ever complicate things in college sports? Yeah. When it comes to recruiting, figuring out if you want to stick around in school for that one more year. The amount of scholarships you've got oh, yeah. to give out and what you have to honor, especially for sports like baseball that are not fully funded with scholarships. Yeah, 11.7 scholarships divided amongst a really big roster. 0-2 oh, pitch on the way from Mejia. What an inning and what a start from Humberto Mejia. Two strikeouts here in the third. Nine up, nine down against the big right-hander. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Panama with a one nothing lead over Argentina. I'll tell you what, Umberto Mejia is absolutely dealing, and how's he doing it? Just straight gas. You see right here, Stallman getting sped up just a little bit, but climbs the ladder. This is something he is doing with ease. We haven't even rarely seen the slider or the curveball or the changeup. It's just been straight fastball after fastball, and that is what overwhelming a hitter is all about. Stallman, a young hitter, he hasn't seen that kind of velocity. Kind of deception, too. He's got kind of like that little short. Arm path gets to the top of the top of the zone with two strikes, and you see more of that as this game goes on. 22 pitches, 20 strikes through three innings for Humberto Mejia as his team has given him a one-nothing lead. And Jonathan Arauz will lead things off here in the second er, in the third inning. Second baseman on this Panama squad hit by a pitch in the first. He takes that one down and in. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, it kind of feels like for somebody like Humberto Mejia, as we have discussed so much with the change in velocity from what these guys from Argentina ordinarily see. Right. You know, if you know that you've got a good fastball, they're likely not going to be able to touch. Keep throwing it Absolutely. until somebody proves you wrong. Absolutely. And then, and you can see too, you know, Storman fouled that pitch off. He started to cheat a little bit trying to get to it. And usually in that situation, you mentioned the fact he's a you know, college hitter at that level. Usually then, okay, then you see. Maybe a little change in that recipe. No chance, just climb that ladder. 
inside, and yet again, a rouse will be aboard on a hit-by-pitch. Yeah, this is a situation, too. You look at the count. This isn't where he's trying to pitch in. He's just loses that command on that pitch. Fastball in. Again, from Manis, just trying to pitch away from the middle of the plate. You can see Rouse, too, not happy with it, frustrated. He knows it's not on purpose, but there's that frustration, that throb going on. On that knee. Just want to let him know. Get a visit to the pitcher's mound here from, this is Rolando Arnedo, the manager, and it looks as if he is going to go to the bullpen and make a change. So the starter, Guido Moniz, apparently going to depart this game. Yeah, he will, as we've got a reliever coming in for the bullpen down the left field line. We'll tell you about him when we return. one nothing lead for Panama. Leadoff man on in the third. Right-hander Kevin Riello takes over on the mound for the starter Guido Moniz here in the bottom half of the third inning. Moniz just control issues throughout the evening tonight. Issue to walk, hit four batters, gave up a run last inning, and the leadoff man is on against him. Only allowed one hit, but Riello takes over here in the third. And first pitch swinging, drive to left field, hit by LJ Jones for out number one. And some hot contact. Some loud outs, too, from this Panamanian team these first couple of years. You mentioned that right. Manis just did not have feel right. at all. Kept missing on the inside part of the plate, hitting a bunch of guys. Just couldn't make an adjustment at all. So one gone. That'll bring up the guy who scored the only run of this game, Jose Ramos, hit by a pitch to lead off the second inning, went to second base on a steal, to third on an error charge to Jose Harris, the catcher, who threw the ball away into center. And a swing and a fly ball in the air to center field. Moving back, Garcia. Warning track. Wall gone! And I'll tell you what, this Panamanian team is wasting no time at the dish. In absolute ambush mode, and it's starting to pay off. You talked about some of the loud outs. Now, all of a sudden, this ball straight away center field, crushed 400 feet. Look at that swing, Ramos, no chance. Now, here at center field, this crowd is absolutely loving this in the third inning. And now, a 3 nothing lead for the home team. 
as Panama is starting to press on the gas pedal a little bit. That'll bring up the guy who drove in the first run in this game, Jose Caballero. That thing jumped off the bat, but like you said, we've seen so many early count aggressive yeah. swings and a lot of hard hit balls into the air. And the ball does not travel great at this ballpark, but that thing hammered out of here. Yeah, we talked about that first inning. You know, obviously Panama, they're excited to be home in front of their home crowd. So jumping all over some of these pitches early. You can take advantage of that if you're Argentina pitching outside the strike zone. But man, if you're going to throw strikes middle against a team like Panama, you're going to pay for it. Caballero, the sacrifice fly to center last inning. And a 1 2. He places this one up the middle on a hop into center field. And now racing first to second, sliding into the keep the foot on the back, yes. A hustle double for Jose Caballero, and it's another man in scoring position with one out. Uh, and this is just heads up, base ring right here. Obviously the single up the middle, but then he sees the center fielder, Garcia, getting a little tidy on the play. He's got that plus speed. Beat the throw easily, just nearly sliding off the back side of the bag. Kind of looked like the same kind of energy, the same kind of play as our next guest. We're going to have Carlos Gomez. Something he would do, stretch that single into a double. Very excited to talk to Carlos Gomez. Top of the fourth inning, we will hear from him. There is a challenge to this safe call at second. Uh, keep your eye on it. Umpire's blocking the view. I think he's good. I think the toes are still connected to the back right here. I'm going to take a look at it. Home plate umpire Michael Uloa and our second base umpire Frantisek Berbeel. Behind the plate for the review. Talking to the folks in New York. Yeah, I think that slide was constantly connected. Caballero is the left hand got in first and they just right. kind of dragged his body across the top of the bag kept the foot on you see how much speed he's got to the fact that that entire body goes over the bag comes out the other side and the ability to do the splits on the other side of the bag to yeah, about that? keep the foot on pretty impressive yeah, I'm straight blowing out a groin <laughs> in the backyard on the slip and slide I would have been thrown out by 45 <laughs> steps <laughs> That. I would have been rounding first by the time the Caballero got that. This will give us a good look. Yeah, it will. So he's on, he's on, he's on. Let's see if we get that angle again. But that would be the angle if we get a look. I, I'm, I guarantee New York, they, they've got that angle. You can see they're taking a little bit. We're going to get another look right here. Good job, too. Keeping the tag. Ooh, maybe it did come off there at that last second. Oh, yeah, it looks like it could be off. That is the right angle. Here we go. We will see if New York sees anything that we did not or has a better look at something we did. And here come the call. Here comes the call from our two men on the review out at second base. So the hustle instead of turning into a double, turns into an out at second. That's a great job by Ezekiel Talevi to keep that tag down as well. Yeah, it really is. I mean, to keep, to, to watch, we slide across the bag in the lay, yeah, you can see right there. And obviously in New York, they have a little bit better technology where they can zoom in on that foot. Looking up saying, hey, we got a play right here. We talked about this too a lot in Germany. Some of the, well, matter of fact, it's one of the biggest plays, biggest overturnings was getting Great Britain a chance to hit that sack fly and then go off to the World Baseball Classic qualify. But let's not forget, these teams don't have the video technology in the dugout, in the, down the tunnel in the dugout. Swinging a fly out to right to end things in the third. Former big leaguer Carlos Gomez joins us after the break. Top of the fourth coming up, green up the Panama.
Carew. We are joined by one of the most exciting guys of the last couple of decades in Major League Baseball, a native of Santiago in the Dominican Republic, and a 13-year big league veteran, two-time All-Star, a 2013 Gold Glove winner, and a guy who got the nickname Go-Go for plays like that head first slide out of second base last half. And Carlos Gomez joins us. Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland Smith. It's good to see you, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Having fun. It's, yeah. uh, we got a chance to see you a couple days ago talking about this event before things got started. Tell us what you're doing here hanging out at the WBC. I mean, I, I come here to, to work in and um, support when the um, uh, Baseball Association. And uh, it's an honor to be a part of this and, and help the, this team to uh, to work in the right way. Carlos, you look like you can still play, man. Look at you. You're still in good shape. <laughs> You're big, too, in person. I'm, I'm looking at you up close. I have pitched against you, by the way, but I will say, man, looking at you the other day, I said to Tyler, like, he should be still on the field. What's he doing? I mean, like, uh, the last couple of years, you know, being mm -hmm. home and uh, ride a bicycle. I'm a oh, bicycle yeah? guy now. And, uh, you know, take care of my kids. I feel good to play, but, you know, the, the game is changing right now when you're 35, 36. Uh, you know, you're old for them. So yeah. <laughs> now I'm, I'm just watching for, from the stand. And, uh, you know, when I have the opportunity to come back to the field and, um, and bring my, my, my experience, I'd be happy to do. What, what, what bike are we talking? Are we talking mountain bike? Are we talking road bike? What are we talking? I do both. Oh, nice. I, I do like a um, road bike and motorbike. Oh, wow. Nice. By the way, he talks about being old. We're the same. We're both 85 babies. That makes you the old <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I am old. That's the old guy here. Uh, Carlos, when you get to watch guys today play this game, we were talking about, you know, really the, the growth of the ability for baseball players to show kind of the excitement and exuberance that you played with in your entire career and how much that's grown, especially since the start of the World Baseball Classic, the whole let the kids play idea, from the head first slides and pounding your chest and being able to celebrate. You said the game has changed and is continuing to change. How exciting is it seeing the way baseball is heading right now? I mean, every time that I have the opportunity to watch a game, I see uh, a lot of new things. And, um, you know, and came here and see team that uh, they never participated or never played baseball before and that tournament like that is amazing you know like i'm be i'm be walking in the hotel and a lot of young guys come to me like hey carlos i'm you know i'm a b fan and uh you know it's fun we're talking about baseball we're talking about you know how good it is playing the big league and uh and how special is participation in this is uh, tournament it is wild, man. When you see him, we saw Pakistan yesterday. I mean, Argentina, Brazil, you know, and just seeing these countries. And, and you do see some talent. Obviously, there are different levels. You grew up in the Dominican Republic. You know, as a kid, obviously, the competition is so much greater. I grew up in Australia where you just didn't have the competition. But when you're looking at an event like this, you know, the World Baseball Classic, you, you never got a chance to play in the World Bas Baseball Classic, right? No, I, I was supposed to in... Uh 2009, 2013, mm -hmm. and uh, and 2017. But those in 2019, my my first son born that week, so I had to turn it back. And uh, 2013, I'm in the, in the middle of the negotiation to extension. So in 2017, I had um, bad season the year before, and I need to stay in the spring training. But the last three. Uh, baseball classic are supposed to be the center field of the Dominican Republic. It's amazing the amount of talent that gets put on all these rosters. We were talking with Miguel Batista in Germany and again here, and Miguel said on the first World Baseball Classic team that he played on, they had three Hall of Famers on that roster. You know, and the amount of guys that they had to turn away from that team are incredible. When you watch the growth of baseball, you know, Brazil is a perfect example. They played the early game today, they got the win. When the World Baseball Classic started, no Brazilian player had made the major leagues, and now there have been a handful. To watch it grow in other countries, how cool is that for guys like you seeing it expand, especially throughout Latin America? Well, you know, like um, for for baseball guy like me, it's unbelievable. And like um, like uh, he said, you know, see Pakistan playing baseball, and uh, and they play great. You know, yeah. like uh, everybody, you know, expect to watching like uh, Dominican, Puerto Rican a u.s but you know I'm, I'm more special to watch a team like that because you know 
you see the effort, you see the young guy coming like early today. The guy to pitch for Brazil, he's 17, right. 18 years old. Right. The guy to throw the eight inning. And, you know, see things like that, the domination, the passion, it's unbelievable, you know. Top half of the fourth inning, it's a 3 nothing lead for Panama. First two on for Argentina, though. Tying run of the plate now, Sebastian Garcia. Augustine to Sarah those two on on the single and the hit by pitch and Ezekiel to Levy who had two hits including a triple yesterday Tried to hold up there can't do so and he's gone on strikes Okay, so Carlos we learned one thing Which is that you faced Ryan Roland Smith before and the result was very good uh -oh. for you And we're gonna uh -oh. take a look at uh -oh. it. the fans are already cheering for a reason boom <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> I remember this now. <laughs> matter of fact, I remember this because one of your teammates, Jonathan Lucroy, hit his first ever home run, and I'm like, oh man, I was kind of, you know, I was getting in a bit of a rhythm. I've got a tough lineup. I've got, you know, Carlos and, and his buddies there with the, with the Brewers. I've got that bad, ill-fitting throwback <laughs> union as well. And then this guy comes up, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll throw this change up. He's going to be swinging just a meatball. He just absolutely murders it. Can't believe it. And you know, the funny thing <laughs> about this is I came from a Sloan. Do you see that video? I have the, the, the my head <laughs> cut it off just because I, I hit nothing. And you throw that perfect pitch to change and I hit a hole. <laughs> oh, we man. were, uh, it was very quick. That Ryan pointed out, oh, Carlos Gomez is there. He hit a monster home run off yes. of him. He knew the exact date, looked up the exact date, June 25th, it. 2010. And uh, that's pretty impressive stuff. When you look back on a moment like that, uh, you know, I mean, that's just, you had many moments with big home runs in Milwaukee and elsewhere in your career. What does it feel like when you get to watch a highlight like that from 12 years ago? I mean, when I watch him by myself, I don't feel much. But yeah. when I watch him with my kids, oh, some people that know about baseball, you know, like I kind of like showing, like touch his shoulder, like that. You, know? <laughs> you see me? You see me there? <laughs> well, he, he, started, he, he wanted to do that to me. He's like, oh, I better I was going to say, better not because you're the one who gave it up yeah. off the facing yeah. of the second deck. Exactly. Okay, let me ask you this question. Did you ever go down yeah. Bernie Brewer's slide in the outfield? I did. I did, did you? Time. How yeah. was it? I, I'm good. I don't break any bone. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was a reporter for the Los Angeles yeah. Dodgers a couple yeah. weeks ago, broken wrist. Uh, it does not seem like it, it seems like a challenging thing to navigate. First time you went up there, were you like, I got this? You know, the first time that I go over there, I look like kind of like uh, you're going to fall to the field. <laughs> Right. So, you know, I saw fly off the edge of the slide. I saw my son slide and say, if he did, I got to do it. So I did it like <laughs> slow. And then my team, my Donald, would slide too. And uh, then we, every time that we are home and we want to do something <laughs> crazy, we go over there and slide. <laughs> so it was a team thing. A bunch of guys are doing it. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I normally like go over there or go to the top of the roof, like this, like a stairs to go and I like, right. watch the, the feel like, like the, from right, the catwalk. Right, yeah. 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 That is, uh, in a dome, that is like vertigo, man. Yeah. That is crazy oh, yeah, looking yeah. that far down. Um, Carlos, to, to be part of an event like this and see these fans turn out, it's been six years since we've had World Baseball Classic qualifiers. By the time we get to March, it'll be six years. With the pandemic now, you know, somewhat in the background, how great is it just to see, you know, we got 10,000 people here in the house tonight, this beautifully renovated stadium. This is really cool. This ball's back up the middle. Argentina might get on the board. Cipriota bounces it into center. That'll just load the bases. But seeing fans able to do this again, how cool is this to be part of this? I mean, like uh, in the Latin country, um, they need to see more like, like this, especially this field. This field is um, amazing, you know, it's like, uh, as a fan, you can come here and enjoy and watch it like a, like a nice game. So, you know, I, I'm here too, and, and this is fun to bring to Panama baseball back, and, uh, you know, so they can continue to play winter ball and be participating in the Caribbean Series. And after that, you know, like you're going to see many guys from Panama playing the big league. Very cool. The, the amount of Panamanian talent that has come out in recent years. We're talking about some of the guys who are obviously the legends, you know, from Rod Grew and Mariano Rivera, but there's a lot of talent on this field. And seeing it from a country that, you know, from the DR, everybody plays great baseball. In Panama, it's interesting to see the way it continues to grow in maybe that second tier of Latin American countries, too. 
I mean, like, uh, I'm, I'm, like yesterday I go to the complex, the Blue Shane complex. Unbelievable for the, for the, for the young kids go there to practice and do a sport. And uh, you know, it's, it's a good uh, vibe when you see many kids like five from five years old to like 12 playing baseball. You know, it's, it's in, uh, it's in the blood. So you know, they watch us, they watch this and uh, you know, give it more push so they can continue to, to, to be level. Carlos, are your kids playing? Yes, I got two kids to play. How old? At 13 and uh, seven. They play just like you with that energy? Or? Yeah, yeah, like uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they play actually today. You know, they play all the, every Saturday. Nice. And, uh, and I have a, a family member to bring it to the field and, uh, and film them. Uh, play baseball. That little one is more funny because he wanna. He say, "I'm allowed to slide every base," and I say, "Yes, you, you can do it." <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Every base. Just get yeah. your uniform as dirty as possible. Yeah, That's what he, he learned he, from his dad. He came in dirty. He came dirty. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite thing to hear, though. When you watch highlights by yourself, it doesn't really matter as much. When you get to watch them with your kid, that's right. the coolest experience. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. As we continue along here on the top of the fourth, base is loaded. Andres Kim at the plate as we saw the visit to the pitcher's mound there from Julio Rangel, the pitching coach for this Panama team. And a squad that has taken a 3 nothing lead. Now all of a sudden seeing Argentina bounce back with a couple aboard and two gone. Two ball, no strike count on Kim. Andres Kim yesterday, two for three with a walk and a run score to ground out to second base early in this one. And a step off as Mejia tries to compose himself. Carlos, your uh, World Series pick for this year. You got a favorite? You got somebody you think is going to make that run? Uh, I don't have no favorite, but I like to see the New York Mets uh, go to the, to the World Series and win because, you know, I'm a big fan to the team to... Uh, invest money to win. Yes, I yeah, want those sure. teams to win. You know, I don't. I don't like as a, as a baseball guy. I don't like the, to the game. Go like, okay, I don't spend no money. I go to the World Series. They're gonna affect the game. Right. So the New York Mets have put everything together to to win, and they do a really good job. So I wish I I watched the 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 New York Mets do it. I think that was Adam Jones's pick too, correct? Yeah, we talked to Adam was. Jones in Germany. Pretty sure he went Mets also. Sure. Yeah. That is a very Heck fun group. Know. You know what I'm saying? And right. The fact they're spending money too. I love that. I mean, especially after the last couple of years where you see these teams trying to get those hype, hype draft picks. Look at that. Get in there and spend some money, invest in your team for sure. Did you, who was your guy growing up? Who was your big hero when you were growing up as a kid? Who do you want to be like? I mean, like, I had a couple of guys, uh, you know, I like to watch uh, Andrew Jones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, um, Gary Sheffield and Manny Ramirez is my guys to watch. And so every time that I watch uh, Andrew Jones uh, filled with the ball, you know, it's kind of like that. I used to be shortstop, but, you know, motivate me to play center field uh, every time that I watch Andrew Jones and uh, the swag that Manny has and uh, the angry swing the guy shuffle so you know i, I kind of like to put it together and make me did these guys know that yeah yeah they know because you know i let them know i have a bag for each one at home like uh dedicated for me cool man that's quite a combination you can put together those three dudes and create a ball player and it turns out to be carlos gomez that's a pretty awesome uh pretty awesome step for a, a ball player as a big pitch coming up here three balls two strikes Runners will be off on 3-2 with two gone. Andres Kim staring out and awaiting the offering from Humberto Mejia as these fans try to urge him with the final out. 3-2 swung on and missed. Kim is gone and Argentina leaves the bases loaded in the fourth. Carlos Gomez, so great to talk to baseball with you, man. Enjoy the rest of the time here in Panama as we send this one to the bottom of the fourth. Panama 3 and Argentina nothing in Panama City. Thank you, guys.
Well, we have to go back to this last pitch. Umberto Mejia, fastball up at the top of the strike zone. You see the little sidestep, and this crowd absolutely lifted the roof off this place. What a big moment. He was on the ropes, and then all of a sudden delivered that uppercut, that fastball up in the zone. He has been living off that heater up in the strike zone. Panama still in control right now. Nine up, nine down against Humberto Mejia through the first three innings. And then six men batted. Argentina loaded the bases in the fourth. Two strikeouts in that inning, that big punch out to end it. And we head to the bottom of four as Panama with a three nothing lead in control of this game. Back upstairs at Estadio Rod Carew, Tyler Vaughn, Ryan Roland Smith. Huge thanks to Carlos Gomez for stopping by. That was so much fun to get a chance to talk with him. He was always one of those guys who, you know, I wasn't a Brewers fan, but I never got tired of watching him. Absolutely. Every single game that I watched with Carlos Gomez playing, I was like, man, I wish this guy was on my team. Yeah, I love this dude. You wish there was more of that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes, you know, with, he, with his attitude, how feisty he was, if you were playing against him, yeah, he could drive you a little crazy. Yeah, similar to, I talk about Grant Balfour, the Aussie, you know, the, the, who, who drives people nuts all the time. But then you sit down and meet, meet him, have a chat. He's got a couple kids. Great dude, man. What's, what's great stories. There's a swing and a fly ball in the air to left center field. Moving back on this one is Lucas Stallman. He'll give way to the center fielder, Sebastian Garcia. Carlos Sanchez flies out, one up, one down. Man, he charged us up. He walks out of the room. You and I standing up. We're fired up to get back to him oh, at the yeah. bottom of the fourth. That's what Carlos Gomez does. Exactly. He's keeping the booth longer. He Good was strategy. so much fun to watch in his career. And what a description, man. Andrew Jones and what he did defensively. Mm -hmm. Gary Sheffield's angry swing yeah. and Manny Ramirez's swag. He said, you put them all together, you get me. That is it. fantastic. I love it. That's amazing. Very cool stuff. And then, you know, you hear these guys like, you know, Carlos Gomez getting a chance to let those players know what that means to them. You know, when, yeah. when, when a young player, like a superstar like Carlos Gomez looks up to up to a player and all of a sudden they figure it out. It's awesome. Check swing from Edgar Munoz who went around on it. He wanted the appeal. The count goes to one and one. I asked Carlos what it feels like, you know, watching that highlight. What does it feel like for you? Giving up a big old bomb. Look, <laughs> if it was a week <laughs> after that moment, I wouldn't want to throw this monitor or this, this screen across the room. But You've got a little bit of distance 12 years later. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, look, Some perspective. I'm, I'm here in Panama watching baseball, <laughs> hanging out with Carlos Gomez, Tyler Munn, <laughs> and the rest of the crew watching some good baseball. I'm, I'm down with I could watch that all day long. Good all right. memories. I think, that's, I think that's fair. Two balls and two strikes. As the nine-hole hitter Edgar Munoz bats with one gone and the base is empty here in the bottom of the fourth. It is a fun atmosphere tonight, man. This is a WBC game. A high hopper over the third. Tough play and no play for Andres Kim. Infield single for Edgar Munoz. His second time before tonight. That'll send it back to the top of the order in Allen Cordova. I'll tell you what, this Panamanian team, we've seen some pop from these bats, some big hits, but what about the speed, too? Big factor here. Look at that. Charging down the line, no chance. This is a dynamic offense for Panama. They're going to tell you what, they qualify and go through to March. They're going to make it extremely challenging whatever pool they get into. So here is Alan Cordova. That 2017 season, he spent 100 games at the big league level. He had never played above short season ball, which is the lowest classification, was formerly the lowest classification, kind of split into two in minor league baseball in the United States. He had played in the short season Appalachian League, where he was named the league MVP in 2016. San Diego Padres liked him so much, they took him out of the St. Louis Cardinals organization and they kept him on the major league roster the entire next year, 100 games. He actually ended up hitting 208, which when you think, wow, you throw a guy from rookie ball into the big leagues, pretty impressive. And since then, he's gone back into a couple of different levels in the minors. This past year, he was in the Cincinnati Reds organization with the Louisville Bats. He played 34 games there. He's also seen some time in Mexico. Played 30 games for Union Laguna. And over those 30 games, the number is pretty decent, to say the least. 431, 478, 647, his slash line. This is a guy who's just had a hit tool since day one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, too. If you're a rule five pick, for example, and you skip those numbers at first. And a throw away into center field. Edgar Munoz 
forces a miscue on the base pads, and the error puts him in third with one out. And look, this is straight speed. You can look at the error, but this is straight speed speeding this game up. Look at that rush throw. Didn't set his feet at all. This is what speed does, especially Argentina. When you're playing at this level against a world-class team like Panama, it's exactly what you're going to see. This is a game that feels like it would make Carlos Gomez proud. Oh, 100 These types of moments. On the base pass, that's the second stolen base that we have seen force an error that allowed a Panama runner to take third. Give it back to those rule five picks. They, they, it, you look at that and say, well, hey, this is a fast track to the big leagues coming out of A ball. But in actual fact, you get on a roster, you barely get any playing time, and you lose all that development too. It is a hard road. And you see, for the, for the most part, the guys who are big league rule fives, it never quite works out. Obviously, there's the exception. Johan Santana with the, the Minnesota Twins ended up winning a Cy Young. It worked out for him. But the majority of guys, and I was one of those Rule 5 picks. I get sent back to the Seattle Mariners. But, man, it's tough because all of a sudden you get thrusted back into A-ball, double-A. And then you are behind the A-ball because you've lost all that development sitting on a major league bench for a year. Round ball, left side, that's through for a base hit. Cordova's got extra bases, perhaps. He will drive in the run. It'll be held to a single, and Panama adds another one. It's a 4-0 lead in the fourth. And Panama just starting to pour it on here. See nothing but good contact, pitches they can handle. And the other thing this does for Argentina as well, when you're facing a team like Panama, gets right into that pitching. Argentina, they are going to lose this game. They're going to manage that bullpen. They're going to get through that loser bracket to get a chance to go and qualify again. So still just one out. That brings up Ruben Tejada. Cordoba has been on twice. Jonathan Rouse has been on twice. Jose Ramos and Edgar Munoz have also been on twice. There's just been a lot of base traffic for Panama in this game. And for Argentina, a hard-fought win last night over Pakistan, but they see this thing run the risk of starting to really slip away from them. Look at the cowbell. You can handle the cowbell, Tyler. I can do the cowbell. Look at the drums, trumpet. A one runner off, and that one gets away. A wild pitch on court by Riello, flying around second, headed for third is Cordoba. And another man 90 feet away with one out. And again, we're just seeing plus speed up and down this lineup. You can look at this and say, okay, Argentina fundamentally weren't quite, quite sound. But again, the game speeds up quick when you have that speed and that pressure. You see them taking bases, getting huge leads, getting an extra base. That is the third time that a runner has broken from first and ended up at third. That one's a stolen base plus a wild pitch. Now the infield comes even with the bags as Ruben Tejada bats in an RBI situation. Time called by Jose Harris who wants to talk this thing over with Kevin Riello and we're gonna let this band tell you the feeling around this ballpark right now. Riello, a little rattled right now, has to calm down. Good time for that mound visit. Jerez, calm his guy down. Tell you what, that band is relentless and it will not stop when you have that pitching. 3-1 to left, an RBI single for Ruben Tejada. Backflip over toward his dugout as he drives in the fifth run of the night. And Panama roaring now here in the fourth with a 5-0 lead. Yeah, we talked about the band being relentless. What about the offense? It just is not slowing down for this Panamanian team. Getting pitches to hit, hitting them on line everywhere. And that is going to spell the end of the day for the reliever Kevin Riello as his manager, Rolando Arnetto, is out from the third base dugout to go get the ball from his right-hander. And that will close it for Riello. We'll step aside for a time. I'll tell you about the new arm when we return. 5 nothing. Panama leads it in the fourth.
It is a festive night here at Estadio Rod Carew. The kiss came up on the video board in left field. The home team out in front. Everybody's having fun. A 5-0 lead as we move along here in the bottom of the fourth inning. New arm of the game for Argentina is Thomas Cuenca, who inherits a runner at first base from Kevin Riello. And already two runs home in the inning. Panama scoreless in the bottom of the first. They put just one man on since then. One in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. They've got a man on. Back-to-back -back RBI singles from Alan Cordoba and Ruben Tejada. And a... Pop fly foul onto the warning track is where that one will fall. Yeah, this offense is just absolutely rolling. Right now, getting good pitches to hit. Having some fun down in that dugout. Cuenca out of Buenos Aires, a 21-year-old right-hander. He'll turn 22 next month. Plays for Jupiter in the Argentinian League. Kicks and comes home. One ball and two strikes on Jonathan Arouse. Arouse, like I said, 15 games in the big leagues this year between Boston and Baltimore. He spent the majority of his time at AAA with a couple of different teams in the International League. Get to the roof of the dugout. And bounces all the way up over the net. And right into the waiting hands of a Panama fan. That's a nice pick over there on the first base side. Two stops at AAA this year. Worcester and Norfolk in the International League. 35 combined games there. He also had a three-game stint at High A Aberdeen. But Arouse really just trying to get healthy, get back to a spot where he'll be a productive roster member going forward. He's still just 24 years old. Guys, this one foul ground and out of play. Yeah, I mean, the fact you're 24 years old, or you've got some big league time, already been a couple different organizations. Look at that pick. That was fabulous. Off of the bounce over the net. World Baseball Classic. World Baseball Classic Baseball. It's got the WBC label on it. Love it. Another foul. Jonathan Arouse in a very charitable mood. He's given out a lot of souvenirs. <laughs> this at bat. Kind of Mariano Rivera jersey with the pickup there. Not a real big surprise here in Mariano's home country. Pitch on the way. Takes that down and in two and two. Yeah, you can see Argentina talking about some of that pitching depth. All of a sudden, you cut in, you started, didn't give you what you wanted. And you're up against this juggernaut offense, Panama. So, this is going to be an issue not only for today, for the next couple of days. A good chance to see what you got, what you're working with to slide down into that loser's bracket. Guido Moniz needs one day of mandatory rest after throwing 43 pitches in the start. Kevin Riello exited at 24 pitches, so he'll be available tomorrow if Argentina ends up playing tomorrow in the loser's bracket. Winner of this game gets the next two nights off. Set to play Brazil coming up on Tuesday. 2-2, down, and that skips away from Jerez, and another wild pitch would put Tejada in scoring position. I think, too, beyond the pitch count, let's not forget, a lot of these guys, obviously from Argentina, how many times do they pitch back-to-back -back days? You know what I'm saying? So you get 20-plus pitches, you've got the adrenaline through the roof, and adrenaline does all kinds of crazy stuff to your recovery. So you bounce back tomorrow, it's a must-win. Obviously, avoid that double elimination. You want to be fresh. You want to have you guys down in the bullpen fresh to ready to roll. Here comes the 3-2. Right down below us. A 
And you can see Arouse just out in front, trying to get his timing down. That's where you see all these foul balls. What a great plate appearance there, and Arouse takes the walk. Yeah. You can see anything in the strike zone right now. He's fouling back. He's out in front on those pitches with that slow velocity. It's just a good at bat, too. Just not chasing that pitch out of the strike zone. Keeping this inning rolling for Panama. So one gone, and here's LJ Jones. Jones a foul out behind the plate in the first inning, a fly out to left field in the third. He ripped that ball to left field. I thought he got it. Cuenca trying to keep this thing where it sits right now at a 5 nothing deficit for Argentina. Panama has made a lot happen on the base paths by putting runners in motion today. They got a big home run, two run shot from Jose Ramos in the third. They have added a, poor, a pair here in the fourth and still threatening. Good block that time behind the plate by Jerez. Ball one to Jones. You know, we've talked a lot about this double elimination format. One thing, one reason I do like it too. I've been to, you know, this this tournament style play, whether it's the World Baseball Classic, the Olympics, uh, you know, playing for your country. Sometimes the way you do it, if you're Argentina and let's say you match up against Panama on that first day, what you can do is kind of work around and say, for example, you won't throw your best guy at the toughest team, and, and you'll, you know, you, you'll basically work around it. As you see right here, I mean, New Zealand, Pakistan, Argentina, Brazil, Nicaragua, this, and, and we've seen Brazil and Panama. So you look at them, if you're matching up against them, if you're managing this team, now, usually, if it's a situation where you play each other once, you work around the bigger teams, and you go hard for some of the teams that you know you can beat. Right. But with this format, I love it, because you can't afford to do that. You can't afford to be on the brink of a one loss, and you're done. That's why it's so good. So if you're Argentina right now facing Panama, you have to go all out. You have to expand some of your better arms in that bullpen to try and get through this game because you can't afford to get to that second elimination game. Yeah, this format really feels like it has the staying power for the qualifiers. We've had some different formats throughout, not just the qualifiers, but the WBC main event over the years. But there is something about all this stuff being settled on the field, not necessarily just the round robin, things coming into play with, you know, runs scored, runs right. allowed, all of that. Absolutely. The settling things on the field via results definitely feels the most equitable. 2-2, Two -two. lifted foul. Yeah, you know, I get sometimes you run into these tournaments where you have to have it that way if there's only one winner. Like, for right. example, we see two qualifiers come out of this tournament. So if it was a situation where you had that final game of this tournament and both teams are going, you really got nothing to play for. You both go, yeah. you're going off. Uh, you both qualify, off you go. So I love that. I mean, we're in a situation 2013 in the Royal Baseball Classic where I believe if we beat the Netherlands by six runs, we went through, which made no sense because the Netherlands had smashed some of the teams that beat us. It was really strange. Yeah, and that's a tough thing because when it comes down to stuff like that, it feels like technicalities. Exactly. And you want to be able to advance or not advance based on just what you do on the field. And, you know, there is an argument that that is what you do on the field. But when it comes down to mathematical formulations, it's something that I think is more difficult for the average fan to take in and think, yeah, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Panama doing what it can to push itself on to Tuesday. And a spot in that play-in game against Brazil. And a swing and a miss here by LJ Jones. It's a nice pitch there by Thomas Quinka to pull the string. And just back to that, too. First of all, here's a Quanky. You talk about that pitch. Change up. High out in front. Slowing him down. You know, I've seen that. I've been a part of that, too. Where you've been in, like, the sixth, seventh inning. And you're trying to do the math in your head to figure out how many runs for and against yeah. in order to get through. That's confusing. But again, sometimes there's no way around it for sure. But I love this format. It's so good. That brings up Jose Ramos, who has been... The hero so far, or one of them for Panama, first pitch swinging. Back in the third inning, two-run homer, and he got all of it to center field. Yeah, he crushed this. Remember, that's 
deep out there in, in center field. We did hear the ball does not fly to left and to center, so you're going to have a big boy shot to get out there past that 400 feet mark, center field, right by that scoreboard. Ramos, a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, spent time this year at Low A Rancho Cucamonga and High A Great Lakes. Hit 19 homers at High A Great Lakes, 25 for the season, and really good overall numbers at 818 OPS, 97 runs batted in. Impressive season for this young guy, almost just 21 years old. And may have an infield single here, and he's going to have it pretty easily. So you can play big ball, you can play small ball, and either way, he loads the bases. It helps when you've got that speed to go along with that power. That makes you a prospect, especially when you're in eight ball. Look at that thing, just way out in front on this on this pitch. Cuenca, you mentioned it too, playing in eight ball in the Cal League situation where you're facing 95 plus all the time then all of a sudden you're facing Quanker who obviously doesn't have that kind of velo it's tough to time up this is a big spot I mean either side for Cuenca you're trying to get this thing back into the dugout down just five on the other side for Panama you get a base hit right here you bust this game wide open bases loaded two gone bottom of the fourth two runs home in this inning after two in the third and a run in the second and Argentina's offense has only mustered two hits to this point. So Thomas Cuenca and Argentina kind of teetering on the precipice right now here in the bottom of four. We have had a wild couple of days of baseball. Game last night between Argentina and Pakistan, in which Pakistan brought the tying run to the plate in the ninth. That game finished up just about 12.30 in the morning, 12.40 in the morning after some rain delay time to start that contest. Another rain delayed game this afternoon got started about 3.05, a game in which we saw Brazil move to 2-0 with its second win of the qualifier, 4-1 knocking off Nicaragua. Did you get some sleep last night or what? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I mean, I, I think I laid down and I was asleep within 12 seconds, so that was good. <laughs> Still only got, you know, five and a half hours or so. But. You know me, I'm a pro. I started prepping for the next day. So yeah, that's that no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate thing that, and especially when we see each other for breakfast in this more in the morning as the one two is skying out to left, and this one's going to die at the morning track. That is the ultimate thing that I would have expected from you. Go back. <laughs> Study till about 4 a.m. Exactly. Get a couple winks. You're ready to go the next day. And meditate. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Two runs over Panama. Headed to the fifth in a 5 nothing game. So festive. Fans here enjoying what they're seeing at this time. Mark 
Emerging to the World Baseball Classic. New armor to the game for Panama as we head into the top half of the fifth inning is a former teammate of Ryan Roland Smith and a former bus mate of mine, there you Randall go. Delgado. Bring it to the, the booth, man. What are we doing? Got to hang out with Randy <laughs> at some point today. Another former big leaguer onto the hill for Panama as we head into the top of the fifth. Yeah, Randall Delgado, I played with him in 2014 with the D-backs. Guy too. Having a chance to talk to him about some of the interactions like I did with Carlos Gomez, but that's all right. First pitch lined over to first. Good contact there from Julian Pedruzzo, but he is out number one. I rode the bus around the Carolina League with him in 2010, so I knew him before you. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Randall Delgado was a big arm. I mean, a guy who had really good velocity and you know, was a very effective big league pitcher for a while, especially with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He started his career in the Atlanta organization and bounced around. He's in a few different stops in his minor league days. Big league career made his major league debut in 2011 with Atlanta, 2011 and 2012 there, 2013 through 2018 with Arizona. Swing and a miss. And the one pitch from Harris. Well, I mean, let's get real. I mean, day one we got here, we saw Delgado, and it's like, hey, Randall, what's up, man? He just went straight past me, straight to you, and gave you a big bear hug. You know, know that? it's uh, you know how it is. You bond on those bus rides. Yeah, remember, you, I was your uh, your seat mate. What do you call? <laughs> when you sit next to someone, what the, do you call yeah, the uh, yeah, your seat mate. Seat mate. Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. not? I don't think I was cool enough to sit near Randall. I was. Uh, yeah, I, I was. Can, you know, I can second that. The radio. <laughs> The radio guy, you sit in the front of the bus. Nobody wants to be around you. Yeah, but look, Randall, the guy you may have ridden with him on the bus, but watching him in the big leagues, man, he had plus stuff, especially that slider of his. You see in that last sequence. Good to see him here, pitching on home soil in Panama, trying to get his team back to the World Baseball Classic again. Randall from Las Tablas, Panama, and he gets three really quick outs to wrap things up here in the fifth. Nothing doing for Argentina. We are headed to the bottom of five in a five-nothing game. Panama with the lead.
The World Baseball Classic qualifying rounds are wrapping up here in Panama, and you can watch the final six countries compete for free. Catch all the action live at worldbaseballclassic.com and by following at WBC Baseball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Back inside Estadio Rod Carew, it's a 5-0 lead for Panama, headed to the bottom of the fifth inning. Tyler Mon, Ryan Roland-Smith, who you can find on Twitter at hyphen18. Don't give yourself a plug, let's go. <laughs> Where can they find you, Tyler? I am at Tyler Mon. You can join the conversation with the two of us. You can uh, give us your thoughts. Ryan had a very good threshold yesterday for what makes a country kind of a serious baseball country. Ryan's theory is if a country has produced 50 major leaguers, you qualify as like a pretty serious baseball country. And, you know, I, I had no idea what to expect when I looked up on baseball reference countries with or baseball players by their nation of birth as we get a look at the new right handed arm into the game Juan Elorza for Argentina here in the bottom of the fifth. But 50 really seems like a pretty good cutoff. Yeah, and look, I'm basing this off conversation I have with myself on a plane ride. Real science. Real science is what you're basing it off of. Well, but, well look, I, I kind of, to be honest with you, I'm kind of basing this off the fact that Australia's had, a th I believe, 36, could be 37. I may, I may be wrong. If you want to hit me up on social media or Tyler up on social media, you can correct me if you want. We did have a lot of people hitting us up about this topic. And I just did, I said, look, you know, obviously Japan, Korea, they have major leagues essentially in their country. So that's a little bit different. But if you're a place like obviously the DR, Venezuela, um, Puerto Rico, Panama, places that they, you know, they aspire, number one, to get to the U.S., and play Major League Baseball, I kind of put that number at 50. So, you know, Australia, I would, you know, baseball has a pretty big presence in Australia, but it's not a baseball country at all. You, you know, it's not a main, major sport, and it's not like kids are, you know, just flocking to baseball fields. So I kept it at 50. So, you know, we had some good conversations, looked up some, some good countries, and we did learn today, interesting fact, was brought to my attention from uh, one of the staff members here at MLB. And this is crazy. And I saw this little number here. We had one person play in the major leagues who was born at sea. Born at sea. <laughs> I was trying to build that up. I had Figured no idea. I had no idea. We were talking about this earlier today. Swinging a fly ball in the air down the right field line. A long run and a dive. And Pedroso isn't able to make the grab. Rounding first, taken for second. Orozco will slide in there safely. And Rodrigo has himself a one-out double. Man, this could have been a great play for Pedroza in Argentina. You could just see that slight little hesitation, that second guess, and then decides to dive at the last second. But yeah, that one step. You can see right there, he starts to round that ball off and second guess the fact that he could get to that ball. It's a big dive out there right from Pedroza, but Orozco is on. He's in scoring position now. A potential sixth run out there as Carlos Sanchez steps in. Do you remember the name of the player who was born at sea? I do. Ed Parade. Born at sea. He played in the big leagues, I believe, in 1914. Now, I think I, I, did some, I did some further digging. I mean, you can see how much I was prepping today, but I did some further digging. Apparently, you claim the country that you left from. So, for okay. example, if you're born out on Tyler Mann's yacht. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's where I'm planning on having kids someday. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, you have, um, you know, Tyler has, has a baby. It's it's whatever country the boat comes from, apparently. Okay. That's the rule. So if my boat leaves from, you know, Monaco, where all the cool people keep their yachts, right? I would have a, a Monegasque child. Correct. Like Charles Leclerc. Yeah, yeah. F1 driver, F1 driver. Ferrari. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ed Poré. Not only was he, uh, as it's noted, uh, best remembered for his unusual birthplace, as his birth certificate lists, quote, at sea on the Atlantic Ocean as his birthplace, uh, but he also, in World War I, served overseas as a pianist entertaining the troops, and he toured vaudeville circuits after the war was over. Wow. Pretty amazing. He pitched in the Federal League, which was kind of a, a competing third major league in the middle part of the teens in the early 20th century. That is pretty incredible. 
born at sea. I have no idea. I'll tell you what, the Atlantic Ocean can claim one major leaguer. They've only got 49 to go. That's right. I said they as though there's a community in the Atlantic Ocean that is celebrating it. Hey, there's our major leaguer. Pitch popped up first base side. A lot of foul balls tonight. Big reason for that is because these Panamanian hitters are trying to time it up with the velocity. And sometimes we talk a lot about that plus velocity and you try and cheat. Well, this is kind of the opposite. Some of these pitchers coming out of Argentina, a little on the in front of the barrel variety of velocity. Mr. Book had said that was Orozco on the double. It was Carlos Sanchez on the double. So Sanchez, the one in scoring position. Edgar Munoz, right now, trying to get him around. Run across in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. Come on, building a wall here, and that one hits Munoz. You know, Initially, I couldn't tell if that hit Munoz in the helmet or in the bat, and it got him, thankfully, in the helmet as he's able to turn out of the way of it. Ooh, oof. I shouldn't say out of the way, but he's able to get his exposed face out of the way. You can see him staying in there, keeping that head down. Able to turn that head just a little bit. Get away from the face. So that will bring up Alan Cordoba as we go back to the top of the order. Munoz has been on three times now. Scored a run, he's over there at first. With Sanchez one station ahead of him in scoring position. And Cordoba, who singled through the left side to drive in a run last inning. Trying to get something re-engineered here in the bottom of the fifth. Like I said, the hit tool for this guy has always been so impressive, and he shows it off again. Laces this one out into center. It's another RBI base hit for Cordoba, trying to stretch it to a double, and he does so safely, and that's going to bring in both runs. It's a 7-2 Panama lead in the fifth. 7-0 in five. This Panama team right now just methodical offensively. Yeah, just climbing this one up. We talked about some of the timing issues with the slow velocity. This time a fastball, middle of the plate. And just that good, short, inside-out swing. Lining that ball into right center field, two-run score. Still fired up, seven runs up, this Panamanian team. Man, and that is some really good base running from Edgar Munoz, the DH as well, who got a great read on that off the bat. And he flies all the way around from first base to score. So a 7-0 lead now here in the fifth. The third straight two-run inning for Panama. And Ruben Tejada at the plate with a chance to make it eight. And he crushes it out in the left, back on it. Stallman at the wall, it's off the wall. Scoring easily from second base is Cordova. It's an RBI double for Ruben Tejada. Panama pouring it on now, 8-0 in the fifth. He gets a little hanging slider up in the strike zone. Just too easy. Just not enough launch angle for that ball to get up in that World Baseball Classic back wall over the fence. And Panama absolutely running away with this here in the fifth inning. You know, we talked earlier today about how in Germany, the higher seeded teams really struggled in their first games. <laughs> Not sure who that was. Came out of the Panama dugout, but looked out at Ruben Tejada and started doing the biceps curl <laughs> thing. Like, you gotta lift a little more, get that thing out of here. But this is the way that these higher seeds have wanted these games to go. And Panama right now just flexing its muscle. One home in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, three here in the fifth, and an eight nothing lead. They have just dominated this game. Yeah, they really have. I mean, right out of the get-go, we talked about being aggressive. 
not only that, having good at bats too. I mean, we saw Muniz, the starter, struggling with his command. They made him grind him out into those three two counts, taking balls off the shins. An absolute dent in this Argentinian pitching staff. 1 0. On the inside corner, 1 and 1. Juan Alorza coming on to start this inning. He has recorded just that leadoff out. Since then, double, hit by pitch, double, double. There from a rouse. Man, eyes lit up on that pitch. Man, this is a great crowd tonight. And they have been treated to a good one for their team. If you're Argentina in that dugout, these drums, horns just get louder and louder as this night goes on. One, two down and in, two balls and two strikes. You told a story when we were in Germany about when you guys played in Japan, same sort of circumstance. When you're struggling, the sounds are so deafening when you're the visiting team that it's like, man, can't this crowd just quiet down oh, and yeah. let us focus for a second? Yeah, and you'll see moments too, especially young players where they step off. You know, they step off because it's just too much and that noise is just too much. The, game, the heart rate gets up a little bit. And sometimes you feel like, oh, if I step off here, there's going to be a little break in the, in the sound. No. <laughs> no chance. It doesn't work that way. You just need to take another breath, get back on, and just deal with it. Yeah, they're not going to stop all night. They've been waiting a long time to see the Panamanian team, some of their favorite players they get to watch on TV, some of the teams around the U.S. Now, here they are right in front of them. So much fun, man. This is World Baseball Classic Baseball. What we saw in Miami a couple of years ago in those electric games between the U.S. and the Dominican Republic, Colombia and the Dominican Republic, what we anticipate we'll see again in March, what we saw in San Diego. The fans, the drums, the horns, the chants, the songs, all of it is here in Panama in game number four of this Pool B qualifier. And ball four sent in there to Jonathan Arauzo. He's been aboard all four times he's been to the plate. That is the charuca, the uh, sort of the cheese grater looking thing there on the right side of your screen. A couple of guys taking a break with some big couple of drinks. Get back in the action, boys. Let's go. It's a cowbell. <laughs> no time to calm down now. We're on the verge of taking a 10 run lead here. You got two on. One out. Just a tough inning right now for Juan Alorza. Alorza, one of the younger guys on this roster. Born April 24th of 2000. And he took over from another one of the younger guys on this pitching staff, Thomas Cuenca, born November 7th, 2000. If you're in that Argentinian dugout right now, Rolando, I know you're already, your mind's already looking ahead to tomorrow and how you're going to structure that pitching staff. Who are you going to start? Who's available? How are you going to structure this to try and live another day? Pitching a foul back to the screen from LJ Jones. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the tough thing right now. If you are this Argentina coaching staff, you've got to start thinking about tomorrow right. at this stage. I mean, you don't want to give up on a game, obviously, but an 8 nothing deficit is a hard thing to overcome in any game, especially a game in which you're playing the world's number 13 on their home soil. You've been outscored 8 nothing and out hit 9-2 to this point. So you do have to start thinking, all right, if we're supposed to go tomorrow, what does that look like for us now? 8 nothing in the fifth. This was a 1-0 game after two, 3 nothing game after three, 5 nothing after four. Panama adding three here in the fifth. LJ Jones 0 for three tonight. One of just two players in this Panama lineup to have not reached to this point. Three balls and a strike on it. And again, we talked about some of the psychological factors in this. When you're Argentina right now, you are getting blown out. 
You're up against a tough opponent. You just have to grind it out the best you can. Start thinking about tomorrow, how you're going to structure it. There's a swing and a fly ball to shallow center. Garcia froze, now going out the shortstop. Tessera won't have a play, and that drops in as a single to load the bases. And that play right there is the priority is center field. Garcia just kind of hung up on that ball. You see the shortstop to Sarah doing his best. Gonna call flat footed a little bit. You can see all smiles in Pan with that Pan Mani uh, coaching staff in that first base dugout. And that'll do it for Juan Alorza as Argentina was hoping to get some length out of him and he struggles. They're headed to the bullpen once more here in the fifth. It's an eight nothing lead for Panama as we move along here in the bottom of the fifth inning and we can tell you about the run rules as they apply to this 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier. It takes a 15 run lead through five innings to wrap a game up early via that route, but 10 runs after seven will also bring a game to an early completion as that pitch spinning the batter Jose Ramos out of the batter's box and bringing in another run as scoring from third Ruben Tejada on the wild pitch and it's a 9-0 lead for Panama in the fifth. Makes it Ruben Tejada no hesitation at all right there. Ball getting away. Oof. That was real close. We saw those early termination rules. Let's not forget Czech Republic were a runaway on the brink of losing by that 15 run five inning early termination rule and guess what they qualified so if you're looking at Argentina right now thinking ah you know look they're getting blown out it's not their year it's not their time guess what they can come back they could shock some people we saw that with Czech Republic that was a 21 to 7 loss it was a 21 2 deficit at one point for that Czech Republic team in their opener to Spain. They bounce back, came through the loser's bracket. Foul ball back in the direction of the band. Did somebody make a nice play back there? Somebody did make a nice play. Not in the band, but a couple of rows in front of the band. Yeah, so it's and like we talked about in the early game today, what the Czech Republic did is they gave hope to the teams that have to go through the loser's bracket. I said I was talking with some members of the Pakistan Baseball Federation on Twitter, and they said, we can do what the Czech Republic did. 
That was one of the messages that they sent, and that's what that check squad did. They gave hope to teams that may have to go that difficult route because they. And I'll, I'll just never forget him ahead of that last game against Spain. So animated, so much fun to talk to. It'll pop up into shallow right to Levy, the second baseman going out, and will be the one to make the play. And he said, it's been like this for us. And he's talking to me and you, and he's so animated, and he puts a finger up to his throat. He said, it's felt like we have played every single game since that first one against Spain with a knife to our throats. Because you make one more mistake, you lose one more game, and that's it. And they did it. They came through, and that gives faith to Argentina if they lose this game, to New Zealand and Pakistan, who lost last night. Earlier today, we saw an impressive win for Brazil over Nicaragua, sending one of the two highest seeded teams into the loser's bracket. Yeah, you said it gives hope, but easier said than done. I mean, you have to have yeah. a short memory. You walk away from a field, especially, you know, you're in Europe too. You know, you, you, you're up against Spain. You see another hit by pitch. You're up against Spain. You know they're going to be one of the toughest teams at that qualifier. You walk out of that game, you mentioned Hardeem, talking to his team after that, addressing the team in the locker room, looking him in the eye. Man, it takes a lot to get back out. They beat Germany, get a good spot against Spain, and take care of business. And on the flip side, Spain, look, they looked exhausted. They're up against Great Britain in that winner's bracket. Yeah. That was a long night for them. Extra innings, big walk-off. They look flat. The emotional letdown from that, too. I mean, sure. it, it would have been one thing had they played the day game on Tuesday and then a night game on Wednesday. You know, maybe the physical exhaustion wouldn't have been the same, but losing that game in the way they did, such a letdown to have gone into the bottom of the ninth with a one-run lead. As here's a swing and a flare into shallow center. That'll get down for a base hit. That'll score two more. In from third is a rouse from second. Comes LJ Jones. It's a two-run single for Rodrigo Orozco, and the guy who got this inning started with a leadoff out comes through as the 10th man of the plate here in the fifth, and it is now an 11-0 lead for Panama. Yeah, you want to feel good about how things are going with this qualifier for Panama at home soil? You do this. Put up 11 spot right here in the fifth. Six runs already in this inning. This takes him to that early termination zone. For Argentina. On the right side, though, if you do only go seven innings, it does save that pitching just a little bit. And I mean, two outs in this inning, but it is not inconceivable that Panama could score four more and wrap this thing up here in this frame or in the sixth. I mean, that is how impressive this team has been tonight. A run in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth, six here so far in the fifth. And they're a little ways away from that 15 run potential early termination mark, but this offense has just been dominant throughout the night as the 11th man of the fifth inning comes to the plate. And you can see Luis Ortiz in the dugout that shot a couple pitches ago, telling his team he's going to start making some subs, getting some of his bench guys in there. There's a drive in the air to left. Back on it goes Stallman to the track, and he will haul this one in as Carlos Sanchez put a charge into it. But that will retire the side. Six runs across for Panama. We head to the top of the sixth inning. It's an 11-0 lead for the home team over Argentina in game number four of the 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier from Panama City.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of World Baseball Classic Incorporated. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Back in the studio, Rod Carew, Tyler Maughan, Ryan Roland Smith on the 77th birthday of Panama's legendary baseball star, Rod Carew. New arm into the game for Panama as we head into the top of the sixth inning. Matt Hardy will take over. And just the one inning for Randall Delgado getting a chance to save him. Putting up a six, but all of a sudden you keep him fresh. It's the other thing this, this game does as well. When you blow a team out, you can save those top flight arms for later on. You only have that one other game to get through. Bouncing ball back to the mound. An easy play for Hardy and a 1 3 put out. Out number one. For Matt Hardy, growing up in Florida, he spent the last five years with the Brewers organization. He was in AAA this year. Augustine Tessera, 0 for 1, with the hit by pitch tonight. Matt Hardy, a 27-year-old right-hander out of Nova Southeastern in Florida. As Ryan noted, he has spent his time in the Milwaukee Brewers organization. He has also pitched in your home country, former member of your former team, the Brisbane Bandits, in the Australian Baseball League. He's pitched in the Puerto Rican Winter League in Manatee as well. A well-traveled young pitcher. And he comes home, puts that one low and away. One and two. And we talked about how today is the 77th birthday of the legend Rod Carew. 1977, Rod Carew won the American League Most Valuable Player Award as the 1 2 was way down and missed. Two gone to Sarah strikes out. And from Matt Hardy, you mentioned the fact he spent some time in AAA. So look at this pitch sequence right here. First of all, you got that sinking fastball, gets ahead the count. Nice little breaking ball, then misses one. And it just expands the strikes and it's got that deceptive arm action. Sharp late slider, breaking away from those right handed hitters. Very business like, too, just getting the ball and going back to work. First pitch, strike one to Ezekiel Tzalebi. 1977, Rod Carew hit 388. Could have hit 400 if he had maybe taken some more walks, but I wanted to get this quote into the broadcast on his 77th birthday. He said, quote, but then that wouldn't be my style, wouldn't be Rod Carew. I do like to swing the bat. <laughs> Bouncer back to the mound and a 1-3 put out, an easy 1-2-3 inning. Well, out of the bottom of the six, Panama fully in control of this one. 11-0 the score through five and a half.
It's the 77th birthday of a baseball legend, Rod Carew, who was born in this country in Panama, moved to New York City when he was a teenager. The American League Rookie of the Year in 1967, a 91 Hall of Fame inductee, 3,000 hit club member, seven American League batting titles. He won the American League MVP award in 1977, and today, Rod Carew celebrates his 77th birthday. There was a fantastic uh, blog entry from the incomparable Joe Posnanski, who wrote about Rod Carew today on his birthday, and he said, Rod Carew, in 1977, his MVP campaign as the first pitch is driven in the air to left field, and this one may slice foul and will. Hook foul, I should say. As Edgar Munoz, leading things off, finds himself down on one. Matias Asa is the new arm into the game for Argentina as they continue to get guys work out of that bullpen. Another one of the really young guys, just 18 years old, and he just turned 18 in August. But in that 1977 campaign, Rod Carew, an OPS of 1019, he only hit 14 homers. And this is the quote from Joe Posnanski's blog entry today. He says, in the last 95 years, only one player in baseball has had a 1,000 OPS with fewer than 15 home runs. And that one player is, yes, Rod Carew in 1977. Before that, you have to go all the way back to 1927 and Hall of Famer Harry Heilman. And before him, you have to go back to Tris Speaker, Ty Cobb, and Shoeless Joe Jackson. Back in the dead ball era with a very different form of the game of baseball as a strikeout and a throwout there for out number one. That was actually Joshua Wright who took the pinch hit appearance there in place of Munoz. So big strike. You mentioned 18 years old, Asa. Here he is being thrown to the Wolves against Panama. He's just watched his team give up an 11 spot. I'm sure his heart rate's going a little bit, but man, big strikeout against Joshua Wright. Prospect with the athletics. So now back at the top of the order, here is Alan Cordova. Eleven men batted last inning for this Panama squad. And, I mean, Argentina just ran into a buzzsaw tonight. Argentina last night with a pretty impressive win over Pakistan in the opener. And we know how much talent this Argentina team has, but, man, Panama has built a roster to try to roll through this qualifier on home soil, and they are really flexing muscle tonight. Yeah, and you can see so many of the players who put their hands up for Panama to say, listen, I want to be a part of this. I want to make myself available. Obviously, guys with major league time the last couple of years get back here, making sure they're a part of it. But I do want to point out, Tyler, I mean, I've been in this situation. I've been 18, throwing to grown men. You see Acer right now facing you know, look, Ruben Tejada facing a, a big leaguer right now. I mean, you think about that. That's what we talk about the World Baseball Classic a ton. Some of these young players, whether A ball or guys who career minor leaguers, never quite got to that level. And look, now all of a sudden they're 60 feet away from some of the best players on the planet. I'll tell you what, Ace will never ever forget this moment. Take it back to Argentina. Coming into this ballpark in front of this crowd and working what it looks like will be a 1-2-3 inning as Matias Asa really efficient in the sixth. Argentina needs two in the seventh to keep this thing going. That's where we're headed, 11-0 Panama in front.
It has been a dominant performance tonight by this Panama squad. And as we head into the top of the seventh inning, Panama needs three outs to wrap up an early victory over Argentina tonight. Or Argentina can keep this game going with two runs. Right now, an 11-0 score. A game will end when one team is ahead by 10-plus through the seventh inning. And with Panama out in front, 11-0, this has been an exceedingly impressive performance. And we head into the seventh. And the first pitch is there for a strike from the new arm into the game for Panama, Alberto Guerrero. Facing a pinch hitter as well as Sebastian Fontana bounces this one left side, one up, one down. But Guerrero coming in, finishes one off, 24 years old. Saw him with the Nationals this year, 2022. Struggled a little bit with a seven ERA. We're getting the chance right now. Finish his first game off in front of the home fans. I don't know if they're too happy about this having to leave early, though. They've been having too much fun tonight. <laughs> having too much fun. You want to cut this off at seven innings. I might just stick around and hang out with them anyway if they decide to stay here at this gorgeous, recently renovated Estadio Rod Carew. One gone. And the pitch there for a strike to Asinto Cipriota. Cipriota tonight. One of the two hits for his team. He reached on a single back up the middle in the fourth inning. That inning is not only the only inning in which Argentina has hits tonight, that's the only inning in which they have base runners. They've been retired in order in every other inning. They sent six to the plate that frame. But three up, three down, the first through the third. Three up, three down in the fifth and the sixth. Leadoff man gone here in the seventh. Two count on Cipriota. Got strikes. Waiting for that strike three call. That pitch looked pretty perfect. And Mike Lula <laughs> pulls the trigger behind the plate. And two gone here in the seventh. That's a straight gas. See some good velo from this bullpen. Guerrero being one of them. So two out. And Andres Kim, the last man standing between Argentina and a run rule defeat here on day number two of this World Baseball Classic qualifier. First pitch to him is ball one. One and one. Nope, check that, two and oh. But that pitch was there on the outside corner. Yeah, we talked about Argentina too. Right? This is a tough one. You know you're going to go down with the mercy rule, but you have to press the reset button the best you can, come back out, and try and live to fight another day. Three balls and no strikes. Right, if you're Panama, you can just enjoy this in front of your home crowd. Get a couple days off now. You're a game away from qualifying again for the World Baseball Classic. Rio pitch there for a strike, three and one. Three, two now. This Panama crowd has gotten what they came for tonight. And a bouncing ball right side should do it. Ball game. A dominant, controlled, wire-to-wire -wire effort by this Panama squad. And they are one win away from returning to the World Baseball Classic as the fireworks go off here in Estadio Rod Carew. And Panama, with a dominant effort, has put itself into the winner's bracket. Yeah. Our final score in this one, 11-0 tonight. And it is easy to look at the offense. Obviously, it's been an absolute powerhouse that lineup. But what about the pitching, too? Humberto Mejia was pumping absolute gas. The fastball was dominant. Randall Delgado. And then the rest of these pitching staff just took care of business.
This is best case scenario tonight for Panama as you hear the fireworks going off behind us. Tyler Monrein, Roland Smith. It's a fun night for that home team, for that home crowd. For Argentina, you get the win yesterday, so you move into that loser's bracket now, but you still feel okay about where you go heading into tomorrow's action. And look, this is tough to recover from. We saw Czech Republic do it uh, outstanding, what they did with their pitching, but you have to start putting the wheels in motion, trying to figure out the structure. How are you going to get your pitching to fight another day? But now we are down to the business end of this qualifier. All of a sudden, there's a limit. Teams going to be eliminated uh, in the next couple days. Pretty crazy that we are already talking about elimination games. We'll take a look at the bracket for this 2022 World Baseball Classic qualifier with two teams moving on to tomorrow from the losses today and matchups tomorrow that you see for that loser's bracket with a couple of teams already headed home. Two will move on to fight another day, but elimination games already at hand here in Panama. For my color man, Ryan Roland Smith, and our producer, Tim Fryer, been a fun night tonight here at Panama's Estadio Rod Carew. My name is Tyler Mon, Panama over Argentina, 11 to nothing. We'll talk to you tomorrow from Panama City.